Hey everybody! Welcome to Let's Look at Thunderwolves. This is a brand spanking new helicopter combat game uh, available on the PC via Steam. Now, this is the kind of game that they sort of don't make anymore. I mean, there have been a couple within the past year or so. Uh, just off the top of my head, I remember Dogfight 1942, but these kind of like old school dogfighting type games, there, there are objectives, but basically you're just holding down the mouse and shooting stuff. I kind of hated Dogfight 1942, I thought it was really bad. Thunderwolves suffers from a lot of the same problems. It's a little repetitive, it's incredibly basic. The characters vary between like annoying and ironically funny, but for some reason I'm enjoying this a lot more than I enjoyed Dogfight 1942. I'm not necessarily saying this is worth $15, but this is the kind of thing where if it goes on sale on Steam, uh, I think you might get some enjoyment out of it. But really, you should stick around for the video to listen to some of the voice acting. I can't tell yet if it's bad or so bad it's good or intentionally so bad it's good, and that is totally fine by me. It is all up my alley. Uh, in any place, let's, uh, or in any case, I should say, let's go to single player here. I've played about, uh, 45 minutes to an hour of this so far. Whoops, I did not mean to pick a mission. Uh, and I, I have a feeling that is enough to probably understand what the heck is going on. So why don't we start with uh, a mission that I've already done here. Uh, maybe we'll go with the Chemical Brothers mission, which I will play on normal difficulty. I don't know why it defaults to casual. It's kind of offensive if you ask me. Uh, there's expert as well, but you know normal is fairly hard. I guess I've died once or twice playing these games so far uh, We've got a number of different helicopters. We can choose from uh, each one is a little bit of a different uh, You know the stats there that you can see defense. I assume one is speed and one is Lift maneuverability maybe is probably the the, the right one there and each one has a different selection of missiles as well Why don't we play as the um, Cherokee which is like our standard starting helicopter Listen and we'll get started here. I'll let them talk. We've got a new client the local government needs to put the hurt on a network of illegal arms traffickers operating inside their borders. The mission is strictly search and destroy. Your first target is a lightly defended chemical weapons plant. Good luck. All right, so this all takes place in and around, uh, well, at least so far it's taking place in the early 90s in the Middle East, basically. Uh, so kind of, I guess, Desert Storm era. I hope I'm not making some kind of terrible anachronism by saying that. I've been thinking. What exactly do our clients want? What does disable the plant really mean? This ain't rocket science, kid. It's just rockets. Right, so that's a pretty good example of some of the dialogue in the game. Again, I don't want to sound offensive when I say, like, I think the dialogue is really bad. My hunch is that it's intentionally kind of like, hoorah-y, like, really kind of, uh, overly bro-military kind of style. And that's totally fine by me. It's actually given me a, most of the enjoyment that I've played in this so far. This is definitely a colorful kind of game. And I think if you're going for a game that, you know, from a fundamental standpoint is kind of simplistic, uh, that, maybe that's the right... Oh, I didn't realize I was out of the mission objective there. Uh, or out of the mission area. I think that's kind of the, the right angle to take on this. But before we get into that, and that's all kind of uh, extraneous stuff, why don't we talk about uh, just the actual mechanics that we have going on here with weird-ass steampunk Kurt Russell talking to us. Oh my god, I might actually die here right off the bat, which would be surprising. Well, that's an interesting way to talk about killing people, but... Um, in any case, we are playing as the uh, new, like, rookie pilot in a high-grade mercenary outfit. So we've been hired by, you know, third parties to do, like, contracted defense or offense or destroy certain objectives. We're not part of a government agency, at least from what I can tell, and that pretty much sets the stage for the entire story. Uh, in terms of, of what we can do, uh, left-click is going to be our standard guns, right-click is going to be our missiles. F launches some flares, which will help me dodge missiles that are incoming. Uh, I can also use ALT to, as again, Steampunk Kurt Russell tells me, uh, enter hyperspace, but really it's just kind of a boost that we can use to get through and uh, avoid getting hit by some of these enemy missiles. Perform perform uh, evasive maneuvers, if you will. Uh, and we can also cycle through different kinds of missiles. So right now, this is just like our standard, uh, I don't know, barrage, if you will. Uh, but we can also, if I use my mouse wheel here, we should be able to switch to something else. Uh, maybe I can't while there is voice acting going on. Oh god, I actually did switch there, so that is like a guided missile. Uh, which is kind of cumbersome to use because it takes you out of the helicopter for a while. Uh, and it also takes forever to charge up. And then there's homing missiles as well, which uh, I can use and I don't necessarily have to aim as hard. I really should be paying more attention to my defense here because it's not going superbly. Anyway, these are all just... I, I'm, I'm killing these guys for basically no reason at this point. I can just continue. So why don't we do so? So the objective so far in the game, I will say the game does a fairly good job of mixing things up. This is a game that definitely feels... Uh, very influenced by, like, the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, and, and it's very arcadey. I mean, like, this is basically like a light gun section. Kind of like an Area 51 or a Revolution X or something like this. And the game does a good job compared to, again, games like Dogfight 1942. 
uh, of keeping the variability high. Like, there's times when you, in the first, you know, 45 minutes of the game, I've controlled, like, drone helicopters. I've had to do, like, daring uh, pickup missions, basically, where, like, the winch on my helicopter is used to pick up a guy who's just, like, knocked a drug dealer unconscious on a speedboat. So there's kind of, it, it's not, like, the deepest thing in the world, but there is some variability, which I really appreciate, because otherwise, these games have a tendency to be kind of a slog in this day and age. I mean, there's a lot of reasons these games don't get made anymore, or at least, you know, made by AAA studios anymore, with the exception of, I guess, like, Hawks and the Ace Combat games, which are occupy a different niche, so I, I apologize for even bringing them up, really. Uh, but uh, one of those reasons is that I don't think they play that well anymore because they all seem dated. This still does seem dated, but at the same time, it's got kind of a, a guilty pleasure element of fun to it. Uh, and I, I, I'm remiss for talking over all of the uh, voice acting here. You know what, from a, a like dialogue being so bad it's good uh, standpoint, what this reminds me a lot of is like Far Cry 3 and being like, I, I appreciate this writing, but at the same time, is this self-aware or is it so unself-aware that it is like authentically hilarious. I don't know! And I'm not trying to shit on the game by any stretch of the imagination by saying that I think that the dialogue and voice acting is kind of funny and bad. Uh, all I'm trying to say is that it, it does make for a more entertaining game, which should be a positive, I suppose. So we're gonna continue with our, uh, basically our light gun section right here, uh, which, you know, can, controls fine with keyboard and mouse. And normally I use uh, my Xbox 360 controller for games like this, but uh, in this case I decided, you know what, why don't we just not make people angry for once, and instead I will just play with the keyboard and mouse to give you an accurate representation uh, of how the game feels uh, with uh, the controls that most people will probably have. So uh, in terms of visuals, the game looks fine. It's not a great looking game, it kind of looks like an early Xbox 360 era game, I guess uh, would be the, the way that I would describe it. We do have occasional, I wouldn't necessarily call them boss fights, but uh, occasional fights against big bads. There are boss fights in the game, which we might show off if we do a second mission, which I'm thinking we probably will at this point, because this one uh, is not super long. So far the missions have kind of tended to be about uh, maybe 10, 8 to 15 minutes in length is maybe the best way to put it, uh, which is good. By the way, I love these superlatives, like when you get a number of points. There is a score kind of uh, factor in the game. I don't know what it's up, but as you can see there, it's like tight. Sometimes it'll be like, you rock, bro. And uh, it, again, this is the kind of thing where I'm like, you, you guys know what's up, right? Like, you, you know this is, is silly, but also funny. Uh, but even if you don't, if the developers are watching this right now, I apologize if this is offensive. I think this game's actually totally all right. Uh, there, there's some kind of idiosyncrasies to it that I think are funny. Uh, we will get to target the drone here, by the way. Or sorry, not target, but uh, inhabit the drone here. Uh, so that means we're fairly close to the end of this mission here, and I, oh, I brought out my Steam overlay by accident, which I hope doesn't break the game. For some reason, Shift W brings up the uh, overlay, but we can descend easily with our helicopter here. Uh, and uh, we'll skip over this cutscene because it doesn't really matter. But now we're gonna we're gonna control this uh, toy helicopter as we come in here. Uh, for all the positive things I've said so far, this does suffer from a lot of the same negatives as uh, other games in this genre. It's very repetitive. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned this in the Metro video that you know we're just kind of disguising the fact that we're driving over things and then painting our cursor while holding our mouse button down. Uh, but uh, it, it, it's more apparent here because there's kind of less bluff to distract you. It, it does get to feel like a slog after a while. If I was being polite, I would say, you know, it's old school, like, simplistic action, but uh, if I'm being impolite, it, it can get kind of boring, and it, you know, I, I think that's kind of undeniable. And that's why I kind of feel that $15 is a little bit pricey. Uh, I hope I'm right on that price point, by the way. It probably has an opening week sale on Steam right now, but uh, you know, I think 15 bucks is a little bit pricey for this. This is the kind of game where if you can get it cheap in a Steam sale, uh, I, I think it's you could definitely do a lot worse. It, it's fun, uh, especially if you're kind of into aerial combat. This is not a sim by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, if you want a sim, pick up Arma 3 and pilot helicopters and that. I mean, you, you all know how well that has gone for me. Did I not destroy this? Oh, okay, we should destroy this guy. Uh, but you all know how well that has gone for me uh, in Arma 3. Whereas in this game, it, it's remarkably easy to control your helicopter. You know? basically like six keys. The WASD keys to move around, and then Q and E to descend, and you, know, you can use your mouse to kind of pilot yourself as well. Um, which I, I appreciate. I appreciate that it's easy to get into. It's very lenient with respect to uh, the amount of health that you have. Like, if you clip something, you're not gonna die. Uh, and it, it's weird that it does have regenerating health. Uh, that's something I don't know if I've ever seen in a, uh, an aerial combat game before. Uh, but there is, like, 100% regenerating health. If you get hurt too bad, you can just kind of fly away from combat for a while. And when you come, yeah, there you go, nice one, bro. Uh, and when you come back, then it'll all be good. Uh, assuming you don't get hit in the meantime. That doesn't mean it's super easy. I, I have still died once, I think, once or twice against uh, a boss that we fight a little bit later in the game. Uh, but 
at the same time. It, it's unusual, but at the same time, it's no more unusual, really, than having a, an aerial combat game with, like, health packs or something like that, and those show up all the time. Uh, when it comes to the aerial combat game health schemes, I, I much prefer, like, landing at a, a repair station or something like that. Not just because it's like, oh, this is not, not immersion breaking, but, uh... I don't know. Also, just the, the, constantly having to descend and ascend in a, like a helicopter game actually feels like it adds some variety to me and breaks up the monotony of just kind of flying straight mindlessly. So here's an example of us having to use our winch again. This is neat that it breaks it up a little bit, but it's also a very simplistic uh, mechanic, as you can see, and we'll just suck that up. And then we should have a boss fight here, actually, uh, which again indicates to me that this is a pretty solid uh, level to kind of uh, give you... Uh, proof of what this game's gone on about. It's kind of like a horizontal slice, if you will, uh, of what's going on with this game. So we're going to be fighting the Spotlight Tank. Uh, this should give a pretty good indicator of how to do evasive maneuvers. Uh, I just wish that it didn't kind of tutorialize it so much. Like, it says use the rocks as covers. Like, do you know how many third-person action games uh, I have played that have, like, a similar boss to this in them and a uh, similar layout in the level? I, I kind of don't need the tutorial. That being said, like, that's the most minor nitpick I could possibly posit at this point. Another thing I would like to mention is that, like, for, like, within the context of this genre, you can fire a fuck ton of rockets. Like, the, the cooldown on them is super, super low. Uh, you can see you have kind of like a Mario Kart style boost meter, well it's not really Mario Kart style, but you know, like a Need for Speed style boost meter at the bottom there. Uh, and every time you fire a rocket, I think it takes off one sixth of it, or one quarter of it, actually that's one fifth of it. Totally split the difference there. Um, why can I not fly, oh my god, my vision's getting all messed up. Use the rocks as cover, wouldn't it be embarrassing if I died right now after uh, saying that I think the game should not tutorialize it too much? That was just me being an idiot. Uh, the tank is dead, I believe. I thought it actually had a little bit more. Um, I totally forgot what I was saying. But yeah, you can spam rockets, and that seems a little... I don't want to say cheap, because obviously the game's probably balanced with that in mind. Uh, but it kind of feels like, why would I even use my machine gun that often when I can just spam, especially like homing rockets or sidewinders at, a, at an enemy. I don't really use the guided ones too much, because I find them... Uh, oh, well, wow, did fairly well there, apparently. Uh, better than I did last time. But um, I, I find those kind of off-putting in the way that they take you out of the action. Uh, did I, I did do the blow-by-blow -blow mission. Maybe we should just check this out, but I do want to point out, because a lot of people are going to jump out of the halfway point here in all likelihood. There is local co-op in the game, but there is no online multiplayer. There's no, like, dogfight online mode. Uh, that would add a little bit of replayability. I mean, when it comes to games like this, I, I enjoy actually kind of tacked on multiplayer modes, as much as that might be a shame to say. Uh, but, you know, it, it would kind of remind me of Crimson Skies, I think. I always bring up Crimson Skies, um... High Road to Revenge, was that the name of the 360 one? Uh, the, or sorry, the original Xbox one, that was like my favorite aerial combat game of all time. You know, it's not necessarily that much deeper than a game like Thunderwolves, but the multiplayer mode, uh, both Deathmatch and Objective, was awesome to play. So I, I, I ache for a kind of return to that online multiplayer dogfight style that I have not seen in a long time. Arcade, of course, there's a lot of Sims that do it. Uh, but yes, local co-op does exist here. So I guess, you know, we'll go back into the single player, maybe we'll play one more mission here. I don't have too much more to talk about, but uh, might as well jump in here. We'll try out a different helicopter. Uh, we can play as a recon if we want, so why don't we play as the dragonfly. I guess I can have different skins for my helicopter. You know, these are the kind of things where it's like, I feel like on the back of the box or in the trailer, because this game, I assume, doesn't have a box. Uh, these things are just like feature lists, like dozens of different helicopters. Quite honestly, like, I don't really give a shit about that. Like, I just, it, it, the game's fine by me if it only has one helicopter, as long as it, it, it's fun. And, uh, you know, th this game is fun enough. I don't necessarily feel like the different helicopters add a whole bunch to it. Uh, so now we're going back here. Uh, so we're in 1986. The story, I guess, kind of uh, jumps around in timeline. It's a little bit like a, a Rashomon, if you will. Um, but yeah, I haven't really been following it because the characters are both annoying and awesome. I don't know. It, 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 I take an ironic pleasure, or a, not ironic, I should say, but a, a juvenile pleasure in, in the characters in this game. So there's a number of different ways you could do things. Like, you can see there's a lot of, like, triangles here, uh, which represent, like, infantry I could be shooting. Uh, but at the same time, I could just bum rush all of our objectives, like, by destroying these radio towers. And I'm not sure what gives you... Uh, the the stars at the end. I'm not sure if it's like rock band style points or something like that or um, if, if it's like the speed at which you finish a level. So we're just gonna try to blow up these uh, radar towers here. Did I play on casual instead of normal by accident? If so, uh, not necessarily a big mistake, but that would be kind of annoying I suppose. Again, I have no idea what kind of score modifier exists in the game. I, I want to stress that, you know, as much as I've had mixed kind of uh, emotions or mixed dialogue about uh, my feelings on Thunderwolf so far, 
Uh, I do think this is a better game than most uh, arcade aerial combat games that I have played recently, at least. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's worth a purchase, at least at full price, but uh, at the same time, it's less offensively bad uh, than, uh, than something like Dogfight 1942, which I really just consider to be not only a waste of time, but a waste of money as well. Or maybe it's better to phrase that the other way. Not only a waste of money, but it's quite frankly a waste of time as well. Uh, especially since it didn't, you know, work on my computer at first and I had to do a bunch of, like, driver updates. Which always strikes me the wrong way. It's not necessarily the developer's fault, I guess. Uh, but always annoying, at least. Uh, I might actually die here, believe it or not. And it, just with references to these characters again. Oh my god, I'm so close. Hella sick! Um... Uh, th there's like all sorts of weird anachronisms with these characters, which again, I, I can't get up in arms about, but it's kind of funny when you hear like, uh, your, your commander is like, I see dead people, which first off is a pretty gross thing to say as you're like murdering people, but whatever, it's an arcade, you know, shooter. Um, but also you're like, the sixth sense doesn't come out for like another ten years within the timeline of the game. Uh, so, what a strange reference, but again, you know. I watch Quentin Tarantino movies and there's tons of anachronisms in them. Okay, we need to get out of here so we can get our health back. So it would be hypocritical for me to, to be offended by that or to be like, whoa, that's really weird. Um, sounds like someone didn't do their due diligence with the developers. You know, I'm sure they know what's up. Uh, just me nitpicking and offering up perhaps something, some interesting food for thought, if you will. So I'm going to bum rush our objectives here. Uh, you know, as you can see, there's a lot of tolerance to taking damage and still surviving. I guess we're just destroying these comms towers here. Basically, my, my thought process when I play this game is you can basically turn your brain off and it's just like big red like fuck me arrows and then just follow them. Essentially, that is my um, my thought process as I play. So we're going to get some kind of cutscene here. Oh, and we are going to get another section here. So basically like this napalm cargo plane is going to come by. I guess it's not a cargo plane, it's a bomber. Uh, but we are going to then... Destroy the cocoa fields, which I don't know if those are related to cocaine because I am such a drug addict that I have no idea. Uh, so, you know, I mean, we've seen this in other games before that don't even need to be mentioned necessarily. Uh, but still, I appreciate that this game does have this because it does break up the monotony a little bit. And that's really what you got to do, I feel, if you're making an arcade aerial combat game is find a way to... At least make people feel like they're not just doing exactly the same thing over and over. In a way, this is kind of doing exactly the same thing, only with the exception that I no longer have uh, control over the actual like movement. I only have control over the shooting. Uh, but at the same time, it does it goes a long way, you know. Uh, and it, this is like literally the most simplistic kind of mini game, for lack of a better word, that you could possibly have in a game like this. I'm just, it, it gives me a red arrow, I put my cursor over the red arrow and press the uh, right mouse button here just to paint these guys. Uh, but, you know, it, it works a little bit. Again, I, I don't want to leave people with the impression that I think this is game of the year uh, or anything like that, but I do think this is uh, not as bad as maybe I would have anticipated going in and definitely, you know, worth your money and time if uh, you're into these kind of games and you can get it a little bit cheaper than with the initial launch price, which I kind of feel... I mean, I get it from an asset perspective. This looks and, you know, sounds and uh, to a certain extent plays like a $15 game uh, or like other $15 games, I guess I should say, but is it worth $15 uh, compared to a lot of other games in that price point? I don't necessarily think so. I apologize for talking over these characters, but I would like to stress that they never shut up. They will never shut up for the entire game. And that's good, because that's part of the flavor. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, it, it makes it difficult to record a video like this to a certain extent. So we have a little bit of like an escort mission here. This is kind of a cool uh, end section here. We're going to have a speedboat chase at the end. Uh, I wish I was piloting the speedboats, but uh, you know, that's not really, I guess, the, the reason this game exists. Move back to Hector. Man, I'm already in Hector's uh, zone here. Don't even worry about it. Get in the zone, the Hector zone. So this is like some kind of uh, other foreign commando who is accomplishing some kind of objective that is important to us. I'm just going to nuke all these trees because I hate Smokey the Bear. Uh, and he's going to get in this boat in a second, which you can't see in there because I guess it is not modeled. All right. But trust me, there is a boat in there, I assure you. Uh, he's not even running along the dock, which, you know, Hector can walk on water, apparently. We should get a cutscene in a second now. I have materialized a boat out of thin air. Uh, and now we have, you know, this kind of like Sahara style boat section. Uh, and missiles, you know, not necessarily as effective here unless we have homing missiles or great aim. Are these homing missiles? I can't tell. These are definitely homing missiles. 
Uh, so we'll just drop these bad boys in uh, on these guys. And you know, it, shoot enemy, kill enemy, rinse and repeat. That's basically the, the name of the game here, the, the game du jour, if you will. Uh, but uh, at the same time, it's all right. Maybe that's a take home message here. It's all right, it's, it's not worthy of ire. Uh, but at the same time, is it worthy of heady praise? I don't think so. It's the kind of game where, like, if you if you saw your friend playing it, you'd be like, You're, it's kind of a boring Sunday for you, isn't it? Maybe, yeah, probably. And that's not meant as a pejorative either, you know. Uh, I, I'm glad that games like this still exist. There's still room for improvement, though. Man, if they could just greenlight a fucking new Crimson Skies game. I'm so excited about that, assuming it had, the, you know, the spirit of the original at the very least. That's like one of the most, I, I hesitate to say underrated, because then you fall into like reddit.com slash rgaming territory, where you're like, oh, does anyone else remember this gem from six years ago? But seriously, man, people don't talk about uh, Crimson uh, Crimson Skies as much as I think they, uh, they should. That was a, a really, really fun game, and kind of the last of its kind, at least that I can... Uh, that I can recall. Maybe I've just been ignorant to it, but uh, I don't know. Maybe that was a, a disappointing from a sales standpoint or something like that. But if so, that's disappointing to me. So we're going to be very close to uh, the end of the mission here. Keep Hector alive. You think I don't understand uh, how escort missions work? You rock. Thanks, game. That's a good self-confidence boost here. Uh, as they come through here, I think he's going to get into a fist fight. We'll see. Again, there's all sorts of like action movie quirks that happen. Now I'm thinking, like, at, at first when I played through this mission, it seemed alright. By the way, the soundtrack is, in my opinion, kind of god-awful. It's got the same kind of, like, Trials Evolution, like, new metal. It's not really new metal, but, like, pounding heavy hard rock uh, that gets pretty repetitive after a while. Kind of fits the setting, but at the same time, uh, not really uh, that engaging to me. It's certainly not the kind of thing that I'm like, yeah, you know, I really... I would, you know, in, in 10 years, I'm not going to be like, man, remember the Thunderwolf soundtrack? Like, they, I would be drunk and nostalgic about that. That's not going to happen. Um, you know, maybe not the, the biggest knock that I could possibly give to the game, but still. What is, what is our objective here? Cover Hector. All right, so we're just going to knock down some trees here and shoot some missiles at some indigenous people. And then he will be able to get into fist fight territory here and we'll be able to end the mission. Hi, like, what I was going to say is that I, I really, at first I was like, you know, the missions are kind of a good length in this game. At least they're not half an hour long. Uh, but now I'm kind of like, these are, these are over long and a little bit bloated. Uh, and I am finding myself getting a little bored by the end of this. But this should be basically the end right here. Uh, unless there's more boats behind me that I've missed. All right, so I mean the, the part of the thing I want to mention about this one is that it seems like Hector's the one doing all the cool stuff here. I want to be the guy on the speedboat punching the drug dealer in the face, and then you know that is obviously just full of TNT. Um, but I guess I now have to use the winch to pick him up. This should be super easy, and we can end this mission and uh, move on to the ending here. So I guess drop the winch using the Q key to get low, and then we'll just kind of paint this over the boat, and uh, at some oh. Do it before they hit a before they hit a rock or something. The boat's out of control is the uh, the, the mission objective, I guess, or, or the reason for the mission. Anyway, uh, I want to skip by this cutscene, but Bruce Campbell won't let us. Uh, and that'll be the end of this mission, and that'll be the end of my Let's Look At of Thunderwolves. What happened to your goggles, Kurt Russell? I hope we get a story for that at some point. Uh, but in any case, this has been Thunderwolves, uh, now available on the PC for 15 bucks, I believe. Is it worth it? And not at that price, uh, in my estimation, but uh, it's not a bad game. It's certainly it's one of the better uh, arcade air combat games that I've played in a long time. At the same time, wait for a price cut or something like that if you're into it. The lack of a multiplayer mode, especially like a dogfight or objective-based multiplayer mode, is kind of annoying. But it does have local co-op. I don't know if that really is the kind of thing I want to drag my friends into, but it's fine. Maybe that's a take-home message here. As always, I hope this video provided you with some entertainment. Thanks for watching, and I will... See you next time.